Yo, what is good guys, it's Cryptic TMG and I'm back with a brand new video and this one is definitely a banger. LFM race at Paul Ricard and we had YouTubers in here, we had Twitch streamers in here, we had eSports drivers in here and it was absolutely insane. Um, I qualified probably a little bit out of position because I was probably a little bit quicker than where I qualified. I only got in one or two laps but um, yeah, definitely, definitely a very fun race man as i said before paul ricard for me always throws up the best races it may not be the best circuit but it tends to throw up the best races now we had jardia in here i believe fox was in here um you had the kai 25 you had chupa getty you had igor ogorodnikov so there was definitely a lot of high caliber drivers in here man it was um a pretty pretty funny race at the end of it and we've got some insane Lamborghini setup now it is a little bit sketchy but it is rapid <laughs> when I say rapid it is so fast especially down the straights man and you can see already kicking off at the front um, going free wide into turn one and what I actually noticed with this setup in particular for the first few laps I tried to take it easy because I did races before and the tyres the tires tend to struggle a little bit towards the end of the race so i decided to take it pretty easy going into the first few laps and just making sure i had you know enough thread left on the tire so at the end i i could push but you can see me now i'm not being too aggressive i'm not closing the spaces down too much um because i don't want to get spun out or get any damage i got rear damage in one of the races earlier and it absolutely killed my car. It was only about four seconds, but I literally died every time I tried to turn in. So I know the Lamborghini is very, very, very sensitive, especially to rear damage. So I wanted to just make sure I got through the first few corners okay. You can see we end up losing two positions. So qualified fifth, we've dropped down to seventh and it is on. You can see we are flying down the straights. Um, doing about 176 miles per hour without any real slipstream so you can already tell if we get in anybody's slipstream we're gonna be absolutely tearing them up so at the moment just trying to get our bearings back just trying to make sure we don't lose any more positions the guys at the front seem to be getting away but it's just fighting every everywhere and remember behind us we've got Foch and Jardier who are doing the last the first challenge they're starting right at the back but you know they're going to have some serious pain, so they're going to be coming through. So all the time I'm wasted now could come back to bite me. So um, at the moment, you can see these guys battling ahead. We're going to try and stick behind this McLaren and get the BMW going into turn one. But we're not in a great position. I could have bump drafted him, but I didn't really want to just... Just in case he made any sudden, sudden movements and we ended up killing him, we decided not to bump draft him. Um, then the BMW gets back through on the inside, so we're just sort of trying to line people up so we can get this run down the back straight. Um, things about the thing is trying to get the run down the back straight is always have to get a good exit of the corner before, and the corner before is pretty tricky because the car tends to want to break traction. Man, we had this guy in the Audi behind who was definitely faster than me through the first sector, but I figured I would probably have the straight line speed advice. Now you can see this is the corner where. You really don't want your car to break too much traction. Um, you can see he's got about a four tenth lead on us, and now you're going to see how insane our car is down the straight. I put a lot of work into this setup, man, because trying to get a car that's fast down the straight and capable around the corners is not that easy. You can already see us in the slipstream, it's undefendable, mate. You can't defend this sort of straight line speed. We're doing 178 miles per hour, and he just lets us go. And we managed to make the corner afterwards. Normally, that corner for the for the Lamborghini is a little bit treacherous. Um, you have to you have to be quite delicate. You can't turn in too aggressively because it just does not have the the stability of some of the other cars. But um, yes, we've made our move. We're back up into sixth place. This is definitely the hardest corner on the circuit for me personally. Never been good at that corner. Tend to always lose time, whatever the weather. But again, now it's time to push on. Um, I still didn't want to take too much out of the tyres though for the first few laps because literally the race, the race I had before this, I just rinsed it at the beginning. Um, and wow, did the tyres die afterwards. 
And it, it's crazy because the tyres died in such a short space of time. I just, it wasn't as if it was like, a, you know, like undrivable, but it was like I was turning in at all the same points. I felt I was braking at the same point, but the lap time was just not there. So this time I'm definitely going to try and, you know, be a little bit more, you know, thoughtful in my, in my, in my, you know, thoughts of how I'm going to progress through the race. The guy in front was lagging crazy there. I thought, wow, has this guy just died? But nope, he was just lagging. But um, we're still on him. You can see how close the guy in the Audi is behind us. And theoretically, when someone's this close behind you, normally you, you probably resign to losing the position. But we had so much straight line speed that even in the slipstream, there wasn't really much he could do. He's, he's only two temps behind us and literally just cannot catch us down the straight. So... I knew I'd probably made the, the right decision in terms of the setup for the car. And that's the thing about Paul Ricard, man. You, you can set your car up so it's like really nice to drive really fast through the corners. But is it raceable? Because at the end of the day, you're going to need a car that can make moves down the straight or else you're just going to get stuck no matter how fast you are through the corners. And if you don't qualify perfectly up front and maybe get away on that first lap, that's the only time you can really, you know, run sort of a higher downforce setup and make it stick. You have to be at the front and you have to get away. Otherwise, you're just going to be in trouble every time you get to the straight. And you don't want to be driving in your mirrors. You don't want to be continuously driving in your mirrors, man. But um, yes, as I said, this race has definitely started to warm up. I haven't forgot Fox and Jardia coming from the back and... <laughs> I knew, I'd, I'd seen the times they were doing previously, I, I knew what kind of times they would be able to do in the race. And you can see the majority of the field are sort of lapping similarly, so um, it's not, it wasn't that easy to catch up or to pull away. It was sort of just everyone just kind of nailing the same sort of time. And as I run wide there, I'm going to get my first track warning and it's very easy to get track warnings around here. But um, I tend, to, uh, I tend to save my track warnings up until the end. If I really need to put my foot down and just go hell for leather, then I tend to sort of be able to keep it quite kind of clean and, until the end. Um, again, you can see the guy in front of me. He's got a good run on the back straight. And that's actually had a very good first sector. The BMW takes the curves at turn one so well. It's very hard to close up on the BMW in the first sector. And as long as he gets a slipstream from the car in front, it's generally quite tricky to, to pass the BMW because mainly it's the straight line where I'm a lot faster but through the fast corners and, and the tight stuff the BMW is pretty good man and you can see how much we dropped the Audi down the straight it's pretty pretty funny but you know our car was actually quite nice through the corners man you have to maybe brake slightly earlier um, just to get the nose in and then not push through the corner too much just because you know we haven't got a lot of wing on so we can't we can't just throw the car into corners. We've got to be a little bit more subtle. Um, try not to make too many different, you know, steering movements. Try and keep it as smooth as possible. And you can actually get away with running, you know, relatively low wing. Um, but of course, for the guys that are running more downforce, like the guy in the Audi behind, sector one, sector three, he's just so much quicker. There's not really, not really much I can do. He can brake later. He's got more downforce, but. Um, I pretty much was just focusing on well all I need to do is get good runs onto the back straight and that should be enough to really um, keep him behind me even if he was to get past in the first sector I feel like I definitely had the straight line speed to get him back anyway um, but um, we would actually pulled a nice gap to the cars behind you see the two leaders out in front um, they were just gone they were flying um, that's the thing about the Porsche around this circuit. Actually, the Porsche has improved a little bit in terms of the straight line speed. It has improved, but it's always been so fast through sector one and three. It's crazy. I believe they take the right hander at the end of the straight. I believe they take that in sixth gear. They don't even gear down for that. So um, you can imagine, you know, how much time you lose through that section. We're still about 1.4 seconds behind the BMW and... Um, yeah, not closing at the moment, but we're on a decent lap on for a low 54. And um, you can see by ourselves, no slipstream again, 176. 
That's the kind of speed some cars actually get while slipstreaming other people. And the guy in the Porsche obviously made a mistake. Um, and he's dropped back. And now this is what I'm talking about. He is someone who was seriously fast in qualifying. And it's a car that has obviously quite a bit more drag. And the moment it gets dragged back into the pack, it really is going to be a struggle because it just doesn't have enough straight line speed. And that's the, that's the sort of the problem, that's the issue with driving cars that are fast round corners but slow on the straight. As soon as you get dragged back into the pack, you're literally in trouble. Um, and once I saw that, I was like, bro, I have to start closing the gap to the BMW now because it should theoretically be an easier job if he's getting held up by the Porsche but that depends of if he can get past the Porsche down the straight and um, the Porsche also stuck right behind the McLaren as well so you can kind of see the way this race is starting to build up man it's starting to turn to a little bit of a train I desperately needed to close the gap I still had the guy in the Audi behind me and look who's in ninth place Jardy has already made his way up to ninth place he's only four and a half seconds behind us and the guy in the Audi, you can already see as they get spun in front of us, I have to take avoiding action and you actually get passed by the Audi on the inside. So that sort of messed us up a little bit, man. But um, end up losing the position, but watch the straight line speed now. Even though the Audi is going to be in the slipstream, watch the straight line speed at the moment. I'm telling you, I, 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 I got pretty scared at this moment in time. Look how fast we caught the Porsche. The Porsche is literally standing still and I go to make it free wide and he almost tries to push me off track and actually caught the curb there of, of the exit road but we absolutely blitz past the Audi, get back to the left hand side, turn in and wow, we had so much more overspeed than the other guys. The Porsche literally looked like it was standing still, literally, it absolutely had no chance. And, and that's that's why I don't think I could ever drive anything like a Porsche around here. As the guy in second has already picked up a drive through, we're only five laps into the race. He's already cut more than three times, which is kind of crazy. Um, so now we are fighting for a podium. We need to catch the BMW in front because he was pretty fast. But I think if I can get close to him, I should be able to get him down the straight as well. But he was actually pretty fast in in, in, a, in a lot of the sectors man so um it's going to be hard to keep up with him as i said i don't have on much downforce so it is going to be a challenge to try and stick with the bmw through the first sector but as the fuel gets lighter i feel like the car gets a little bit better and now i'm starting to push on because i know there's an opportunity to get second and you know you never know what happens if the leader was to pick up a penalty or anything like that we could end up getting a win but um we made some good moves there, some good positions. Plus, we know Jardia was coming because we saw Jardia was only four and a half seconds behind us. And I think he was in the Honda, which is also rapid around this track. So I'm trying to make a move. I'm trying to get out of here, man. <laughs> OK, I already know what's, I already know what's coming. Um, BMW again gets a good run. He's about eight temps in front of us as we get to the straight. Let's see how much time we're able to take out of him. I think you get slipstream from like, is it six or seven temps back? I think that's when you get the slipstream. Um, so now I think we'll be in, we'll be getting a little bit of slipstream from behind the BMW. You can see us closing, made three temps already on this straight, four temps on this straight. And as I said, you know, he's going to need to keep us away because we're gaining loads loads and if we was a little bit closer we, we probably would have gained even more but we gained four temps on one straight right there and um all i had to do is just make sure i was driving well enough in this sector to really close it down actually actually makes a mistake and goes wide as i said this is such a difficult corner man i think most people find this corner pretty tricky um for me it's all about not being able to get the line right two times in a row <laughs> okay um but again, we're going to try and get to the back of this BMW and we're definitely close enough. So I, I need to make sure I nail this first sector to get absolutely spot on. Now he's going to know that he's under pressure because he's probably seen how much I took out of him on the straight. So in his head, he's going to have to throw it in um, this first sector and actually just go for it. But um, we try to keep it as neat as possible. He's a little bit wide actually. And, I think he gets out of the throttle a little bit, not to get a, not to get a, a warning, and this has put us right on him. And at this point, I knew all I'm going to do 
as be as neat as possible and just make sure I can get that run out of that corner. So at this point, I pretty much know, you know, I've got this guy, you know, I, I've definitely got him. And he goes wide again, makes it even easier for us. And even though the, the BMW still picks up a, a pretty decent exit, even though he'd messed the corner up, he's about four temps in front, but I already knew we gained four temps the last time around. So we're going to be even closer now. So we're going to get even more of a slipstream. We're going to be much earlier on. You can see us just absolutely reeling him in. And there you go. Move pretty much done. It's undefendable. You cannot defend against this sort of straight line speed divide, man. It's crazy. And for me now, it was just trying to pull away and see what I can do. Um, Jardia up to sixth now. And, and he was only about two and a half, three seconds behind us, I think. So again, he's closing the gap while we've been battling as well. And um, he's closing the gap. And he probably had similar straight line speed to me because the Honda is pretty fast down the straights as well. Um, but it probably takes the corners slightly better. So I, I already knew Jardia would be a problem if I couldn't get past some of these other cars um, but the battling was pretty insane the guy in the lead absolutely got off in the Ferrari which is also another car um, that is extremely fast in the straight line around this circuit um, very good around the corners but it just cannot take curbs which is probably the Ferrari's biggest issue Jardia doing 54 zeros he was seven tenths faster than us on that last lap so you can kind of see that he definitely will have the pace to catch us. It's just whether he can get past the cars in front. But I'm pretty sure he was, he's going to have a decent straight line speed advantage because the Audi that was behind us didn't seem that fast down the straights, if you remember when they were behind us. Um, the BMW gets good exits onto the straight, but I don't feel like that has crazy straight line speed either. So, you know, as soon as Jardia catches these guys, he catches them before the straight, I'm pretty sure he's just going to be driving past them, um, similar to how we were able to so now is our time to get away. Have I taken too much out of the tyres already? Hopefully not. But um, yeah, we were definitely pushing hard. And I think we even catching the guy in the lead down the straight. And that's something because the Ferrari is very fast down the straights on this track. Um, and you can see these guys behind me, they're actually in my slipstream. So they didn't lose too much time. I think he only lost a tenth down that whole straight. Um, but Jardia only 1.8 seconds behind now, so he's not far behind at all. He's about nine tenths behind the guy in fourth place. And he's probably gonna close that up pretty quickly. And I can already see the fact that if he gets close, I know he's pretty much through already. Um, I can actually see him in my mirrors. So now you can see we're actually still not doing too badly compared to the guy in the lead. Um, as I said, I think our pace was better than our qualifying position, but the, the last sector is definitely where we were probably slowest compared to the faster guys. Um, tended to struggle a little bit uh, through the last sector. Couldn't really get the car turned in. That's probably one major thing I need to alter about the setup. How do I get the slow speed um, sort of nose into corners without jeopardizing the stability in the fast corners? after the long straight because that that's what was tending to happen when I went rearwards on the brake bias um, through the long right hander after the fast straight the car just became an absolute nightmare so um, we were still trying to figure it out because I felt like through this section we just weren't as neat as what I was wanting to be I couldn't really get the car turned in how I wanted to um, so those those are maybe a couple of issues that I, I want to sort out in the setup but trust me if you're if you're a Lambo driver and you're looking for a pull record setup, mate, I'm telling you. Um, I'm gonna release this setup on Setbase today, and wow, all I've got to say is, it's just, in the race, it is demon time, believe me. <laughs> in the race, it, if you don't make a mistake, almost nobody can get past you. Nobody, there's not many cars that catch you in a straight line and overtake you, man. So, um, yeah, guys, definitely jump on Setbase, go check it out. Go buy it, download it for yourself and see what you can do. I know if someone like Goldsaw had this setup as well, he'd probably be absolutely flying. And Goldsaw was actually in this race as well. He also started at the back. So I'm telling you, man, it was definitely a cracked out lobby, man, for sure. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I started in fifth. I, I was thinking of starting at the back as well. Um, 
but I decided after one of the last races where I got damage on the rear and it dropped me back so many positions I decided let me just get back what I lost instead of starting at the back but I, I would love to start at the back I actually did a race the other day in the McLaren where I actually started from the pit lane and um, that was pretty fun but again because the McLaren has more downforce I didn't have as much straight line speed so it wasn't as straightforward to overtake people as it would have been if I did it in a Lambo so um, maybe I might try similar techniques with the setup on other cars and see if I can get the same sort of results man but um, we shall see so we're still keeping the leader within arm's length in terms of lap times he's not getting away too much but um, this is normally around the time that the Lambo starts to fade a little and you feel like you're doing everything the same but you just you just tend to not be able to go through particularly the slow corners you just don't tend to be able to go through there as quick um, the nose just doesn't turn in and it just I don't know it just it, it feels it doesn't feel crazily different but it's just slower and you can already see we've lost two and a half temp, two and a half temps in his first sector Jada is 1.4 behind he's about to attack the guy in the Audi you can see they're both 1.4 so we know Jada is going to absolutely fly past him and then he's only three temps now behind the guy in the BMW so he is definitely catching us um, while still overtaking other people we've got about four and a half minutes left that's about three laps and we know Jada is coming and our car is just starting to fade just a little bit so we're gonna have to concentrate make sure we don't make any mistakes again through this tough corner and yeah I just I just don't even know the line lads I don't know what line to use through that corner whatsoever but um so far so good not on a bad lap gonna be on again for maybe a point three or a point four and in this last corner I just felt the car's nose just does not turn in and those that's definitely one of the definitely one of the corners that I felt like I, I, I was losing a bit you know compared to when I was driving the McLaren it just seems to turn in so nice and um, there's actually only like a tenth slower than Jardia there um, so it wasn't too bad on that lap but I think you know as the tyres start to wear down we're just going to drop a little bit more time and now Jardia is the car directly behind us 1.6 seconds pretty much with two laps to go and again with two deep into that corner because I really want to move my brake bias rearwards for the first sector but you know sometimes you forget to move it back and then you get to a fast corner and absolutely die so I was thought you know what let me just let me not make any changes let me just keep it as um keep it as straightforward as I possibly can and uh you know just not 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 make any more extra problems for myself Jardia got the gap down to 1.2 so much faster through that first sector um, again I told you that's where I thought I was weak for the little, little tight and twisty parts and Jardia has taken loads of time out of us but he is not catching us on the straight which bodes well for us we have similar straight line speed or at least um, you know I may have a tiny advantage on straight line and it's pretty much going to be the corners where he's going to do his most damage but um I think we actually had do we have three laps left or two laps left um judge my way the leader is we're going to have another two laps so Jardin is catching we've got two laps to go I was hoping hoping that the next lap would be our last lap but I feel like the leader's going to go through so there'll be two laps to go um and I have even more time to hold on as Jardin catches us the leader's doing 54 fours we're also about to do a 54.5 I believe um, so the pace ain't bad Jardy does a 53.8 he's absolutely flying Foch behind him does a 53.8 even Foch was coming for us as well and I'm thinking Jesus I can't do that lap time at this stage um, and yeah it, it, it was time it was time to start using some extra track man I, I started not to care about track limits I thought hey I'm not going to get a penalty at this stage so I'm going to have to start flying through these corners man but this section, uh, listen, the nose just would not go into the corners, man. Just would not go into the corners. And I felt like uh, I'm going to lose so much time through here. You can see Jada's getting the gap down all the time. And I think we've got, we actually got a good run onto this back straight. Pretty good run. He's eight temps behind, seven temps behind. And I think that is kind of slipstream range. But 
I feel like the car was fast enough maybe just to pull out of that a little bit. Um, as you can see, seven tenths just about in the range for a slipstream. He's not gaining much. As you can see, time actually goes up. So that tells you how fast this car was down the straight. That even when he's in the slipstream range, I actually managed to pull away from him. Um, but it was through this section where all of a sudden, you're going to start to notice that Honda just get bigger and bigger and bigger in the mirrors because it's definitely through the corners has quite an advantage as the back end wiggles a little bit a short shifted a little bit too late and the back end stepped out and now you can see where we're just losing that you know that real important grip in the slow speed which is the, the first sort of um first sort of warning that yeah your tires are not where they used to be and now we're heading on to the last lap jordan is close fox is not far behind either um, the leader doing 54 fours. Not even the leader was matching the pace of Jardia and Foch at the moment. I do a 54 5 again. Um, Jardia with a 54 0, 54 1 for Foch. So you can see we're, we're pretty much running at the leader's pace, but that's not enough. Um, Jardia and Foch definitely running quicker as I just blatantly just track extend there. And I was like, bro, it's the last lap. You know what I mean? I need to get away. He doesn't need to get too close down the straight. Um, if he, if he did get closer, I'm not sure how much slipstream he actually would get or how much he actually would gain. And um, so far, not a bad first sector. But Jardia also has had a very good first sector. He's only three tenths behind us. Now, this is not like the other cars. The Honda definitely has straight line speed. It definitely has some good straight line speed. He's actually caught us a tenth down the straight. You can see he's getting a little bit bigger in the mirrors. And at this stage, I was thinking, please, 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 please. Let's, 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 let's not go side by side through here. And at this moment, my missus actually came into the room and said, it's three o'clock, it's time to go. And I absolutely just lost full concentration. Right. Boom. Right. Lost, lost it at the end of the straight. Foch almost hits us, then goes off. What a save by Foch. But then he actually bins it on the infield on the bumps. Unbelievable. I felt kind of bad it was kind of my fault because I was just in the middle of the exit road and you know I, you know I didn't really have anywhere else to go we actually lost another position to the um Audi but our tires are cooked at the moment so we have to defend from the BMW because I know our tires are going to be like jelly and as I said the Lamborghini will be very very um, sketchy so I made sure I broke late into this corner so you couldn't get it inside the BMW tries to throw it around the outside then it's a drag to the line and we know we ain't gonna lose any drag races but we lose the podium the second position Jardia picks up the second position and um, we lost the podium to the Audi and we end up finishing fourth from a race where we probably should have came home in second um, Goldsaw also making it up towards the front as well and what a race, lads. What a race that was. Insane battle. Um, made that silly mistake at the end and it definitely cost us the podium, man. Would have been some good ELO points, but we still got some good points anyway because I believe I was ranked like maybe like 14th in that lobby or something like that. So um, some good points. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. It's Cryptic TNG. Like and subscribe. Also remember you can buy this Lambo setup from Setbase. I will be dropping that today as well. So yeah. Take care of yourself, guys, and peace.